In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a simple form in HTML. And once that form is submitted, the user clicks on the button, um, then it will get processed. Uh, and in this case, we're just going to do really simple processing. We're just going to send the data that's typed in here to a results.jsp or to another file. And then when those when that data comes into the file, we're going to stick it into a table. So nothing too complicated here, but it's the the building found the building blocks, the basic foundation here for other things that we're going to do later, uh, like add data to a database, do more complicated processing behind the scenes, um, those kinds of things. So this is going to be just HTML5, and this will have JSP, uh, and it will use uh, Java to collect the data coming in and then put it where it needs to go. What we're doing now is just, um, I, I believe it's called model one, uh, that's one name for it, um, but there's no, uh, no, nothing fancy going on. All of the Java will just be embedded within the results.jsp. There's no servlets or anything like that. So it's really the most basic um, building block or most basic foundation uh, for things that we're going to do later on. So let's get busy uh, working on our form here. We can see that we want uh, first name, last name, email, and age, and then a couple of buttons. So in NetBeans, I need to create a new project. A Java web project, web application. I'm going to call it Simple Form. I like where it's putting it. You can change it if you want. We're going to use Tomcat, Java EE7 for the web. And our project is created. Uh, and under web pages, it gives us index.html. Now I could use an HTML file um, for the form. Uh, because I'm just using HTML5 uh, form uh, components, but I'm going to make it a JSP. So I'm going to delete that. And just for um, keeping everything consistent, I'm going to create a new JSP page. And I'm going to call it index. I'm going to come in here and clean things up. I want to get rid of the comments. So the first component after I've got the title set and I've just put a heading in here, uh, I need to create the form. So the, the form will bundle all of the data together that the user is going to input and then it will uh, the form will have an action or a method uh, and it will send it back to the results. So let's get started with a form. So after we put our form in here, our form can have arguments. One of the first arguments that we'll put into it is name. And the name is just a way to uniquely identify this object. So a form is a class. When it gets dropped on here and it's used in one particular way, it'll be a, an object. We need a way to name it so that we can reference it. Uh, I'm just going to name it um, demo form. It would need to be named something meaningful uh, that would be helpful. A form needs an action, and so what are we going to? What's our action going to be? It's going to be results.jsp. So we're going to send the data from this form over to results.jsp, and it needs a method, and the method that we're going to use is post. So post is send it, send the data up. We could also get, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense here. So when the user fills out this form, we're going to post it or send it to results.jsp. All right, inside of the form, I need to add my uh, the labels in my text boxes and buttons. Um, the easiest way for me to do that is just to include a table. 
Uh, tables, uh, if we were doing this for real, we would probably use divs and the CSS to separate everything. Uh, tables are just kind of a quick and dirty way to format things, um, and that's really all we're looking for here. We're not so, so much worried about formatting as function right now for this. My table will have a table body. And inside the table body, I'll have a table row. And inside the table row, I'll have table data. I'll actually have two table data, two columns. And in the first one, I want to put the label first name. And in the second column here, I want to put the text box. So the text box is actually going to be an input. The type is going to be text. It needs to have a unique name to uniquely identify this input box, and I'm going to call it first for first name. It can have a value. In this case, the value is going to be blank. And I'm going to give it a size. And after I've done that, I need to close up the tag. And now that I have the first row set, I can just copy that. And that'll be for last name, email, and age. And then I'll just go back and edit. So first name, this will be last name. And I need to change the name of that object or the name of that input box. I'm going to change it to last. Change that name to email. And set that to age. OK, I think I've got, uh, got this table set. Before I go any farther, I want to just check it, though. So I'll save, and I'll right-click the project and do Run. Looks good. So I've got my labels on this side, my input boxes on that side. Last thing I need to do uh, is add the submit buttons, and the, I'm going to put a clear button in there as well. So I want to be outside of the table, but inside of the form. So I want to be right here. And I'm going to add an input. The type is going to be a reset, which will be our clear button. Value, this is the, the text that appears on the button. I want it to be clear. And then I need to give it a unique ID, and that's going to be clear. And I need to do the same thing for a submit button. And again, value is the text that appears on the button that the user reads. Uh, so I'm going to do submit. It could be register. It could be um, whatever you needed it to be. But I'm just going to use submit for now. And then it needs to have a unique ID. I'm going to do submit as the unique ID. Remember, whenever we save, uh, NetBeans automatically builds the project. So we can come back here and just refresh, and now we can see our button. So when I click Submit, um, I can see that it's going to results.jsp, but status 404, it's not found. Results.jsp is not there yet. So let's start building results.jsp. I'll come to the project, right-click New. I want to choose JSP. The name is going to be results. And again, I'm just 
just going to clean it up. And we're not doing any fancy processing or anything like that. We're just simply taking what's typed in index and going to spit it back out in results. Uh, so easiest way to do that is probably with a table. And inside of the table, I'm going to have the table body. And inside of the table body, I'm going to have the table row. And inside the table row, I'm going to have the table data. In this first column will be the label. Uh, so again, just first name is fine. I'll copy this table row. There are four pieces of information I wanted to display. First name, last name, user email, and user age. And let me just view results. So I'm at the root of my project here in the URL bar. I'll just type in that new page name. And I can see my labels are fine. Uh, I'm going to put a border around it to make it just a little different, a little easier to read. Okay, I can see my labels on the left, but in my uh, other column, there's nothing there yet. This is where the user, uh, the information that the user types will eventually go. Okay, so I've got uh, these things going. So now I need to capture that information. So once the user clicks Submit, index.jsp will pass to results.jsp because that's what it says to do here in the form some different objects and values. So the first thing it'll pass is first, and first will be equal to whatever um, the user types in here. It'll Then the next thing it'll pass is last, and last will be set equal to whatever the user types in there. So I need to receive that information in results. So I'm gonna get up here between the head and the body, and this is where I'm going to put my uh, Java that will parse this. I need to capture this information and collect it into a variable. So it's going to be a string type variable because it's going to be a first name. I need to give it a name, so I'll just give it a first name. And it needs to be set equal to the request get parameter because this is a parameter that's coming back and it's going to be first. So when the user types their first name in that first name box and they click submit, it's going to send to results the object first equal to whatever they typed in. Here we're capturing that object, we're capturing that data, and we're sticking it in the first name variable. So I'll need to do this for the other four things that we're capturing. So we were capturing last, we were capturing email, and we were capturing age.
I need to give those. So this is what's coming from index. This is defined by our uh, text box names here. This is the variable name I'm assigning here. So not dependent on anything. I'm going to use last name, email, age. So when index passes it to results, we're going to capture those things and store them in variables. And now I can spit those variables back out. So I can come up here to first name. Uh, it'll be a Java expression. And I can use the variable name, first name. For last name, I'll use the Java expression. And I will capture last name. So whatever is in this variable, I'm going to display right here. I'll capture user email and user age the same way. And the variable name for email is just email and the variable name for age is just age. And I can see that uh, those variables are blank right now, so they're set to null. So null is appearing. So if I want to manually see what index is going to do, uh, I can come up here and manipulate the URL. So in index, the first text box is named first. So that's going to be one of the first objects that are passed back. So I can put a question mark after the, the page. There's the name of that first text box that collects the first name. And here is the information that the user would have typed in there. So first equals Mike. Now if I enter this, this is what is actually being captured in results. So we're looking for the object first. We're going to take that, stick it into first name, and spit it out down here. If I wanted to see if this last name was working right, I can append. And now I have two. So I can watch these fill in. So it seems as though uh, results uh, is working correctly. Java is picking up the parameters correctly. Let's test the whole thing. So everything seems to be working. The information that the user types in is getting passed back to results and getting displayed. And my clear button is working.